Good afternoon and welcome back to the Festival of Early Years. Uh, my name is Mark Brown. I work at TG Escapes Eco Buildings. Uh, we provide uh, modular eco buildings throughout the education sector, but we're here today to talk specifically about how natural building design can enhance early years settings. Um, I'm going to run through a quick, a quick presentation um, explaining some of the benefits and features of, of these types of buildings. And then we're going to have a, a Q&A with uh, Sam Patel, who is from Bickley Park School, um, who's going to share his experience of working uh, with an early year setting uh, in an eco building. So how can natural building design enhance early year settings? What we're going to run through today is some of the benefits of these types of buildings. <clears throat> First off, we're going to look at how Speedier construction with sustainable materials can save time and energy, which is a benefit to any education setting. How energy efficient features can reduce running costs. How buildings designed using uh, natural materials and flooded with natural light improve well-being and educational outcomes. How easier access to outdoor learning can improve physical and mental health, cognitive function and social skills. And then finally, we're just going to touch on space planning and infection control and how standalone buildings can help schools Re and earlier settings rethink how to use their, their space uh, for some of today's challenges. So first off, um, speedy off-site construction using sustainable materials saves not only time and disruption on, a, on an education setting, but also saves energy, which is increasingly important today. And as we move through legislation to net zero and carbon taxes, Will be, will be even more important in the future. So uh, a, a modular process, you, you may have heard the term modular building before, and um, it can refer to, broadly speaking, two types. Um, firstly, there's the volumetric type, which is, which is a, a, a unit which is craned into a site and, and pieced together on site. I'm talking today specifically about a sectional modular process. And this is a process whereby the components are manufactured in the factory brought to site and then erected on site um, uh, in less time and with less disruption than a, than a traditional build. So when you compare a modular classroom build to a traditional one, what you can see is that there's a significant amount of time saved. Obviously this varies by site and scale of the building. However, um, what, what, what happens is the, the site preparation can, can take place at the same time as the frame is constructed and the components are manufactured. And this is the way that we save time um, in the whole process. But not only does it save time, it also reduces wastage and transportation energy. So you only bring the materials onto site when they're ready to be used, so you can keep the rest safe in the warehouse. Um, they're actually much lower weight using timber frame, and I'm going to talk a bit more about timber. Using timber frame reduces the cost of transportation energy because you've got lighter materials um, and you can transport, transport components more efficiently. <clears throat> So I mentioned timber and, and um, timber, the, the use of timber, I think, is something which we should do far more of um, as a modern method of construction. It's, it's the only material grown for construction that is truly sustainable. 97% uh, of all timber used in Europe is registered under the FSC and PFC schemes. And this is resulting in European forested, forested area increasing by 30%. So um, de demonstrating that, the, the, that these schemes are working for, to produce sustainable materials. Timber uses far less energy to harvest and manufacture. Um, it's not only a carbon sink, it releases oxygen and improves air quality during its 60 year life cycle. It's um, only 20% of the dead weight of concrete and 6% of the weight of steel. And it looks and feels much warmer. And it creates buildings which feel very different to traditional buildings. And I'll come on to demonstrate that as I go through this presentation. We do a lot of research amongst our customers to understand how the buildings work in use and, um, and, and understand the benefits they get from it. So um, I'm going to intersperse this presentation with some of the findings from that research to, to demonstrate the effect. So why timber? Well, when you compare timber to other construction materials uh, such as steel and concrete, so we have 400 million tonnes of construction material used per annum in the UK. About 1.4 of that is steel, about 100 is concrete and 7.5 of timber. When you look at the CO2 they produce, what you can see is that versus steel and concrete, which are net contributors to, to, um, uh, to, to the carbon, carbon dioxide emissions, timber actually 
is a carbon sink. So it has a, a net negative effect, if you like, on, on carbon emissions because, because you're using a material which locks the carbon up. Not only that, but it's the oldest building material known to man. Um, it's, um, it's been around since, since, since mankind started building, but it's also the kindest. When you look at the effect on, on the environment of timber versus concrete and steel, it performs much better with regards to water pollution, much less fossil fuel consumption, and much less potential for creating smog. And this is data from the Athena Eco Calculator. So that's um, that's a run through of kind of the benefits of the of, of the, these types of um, uh, buildings in construction. But importantly, and, and I think for most most early years providers, running costs are, are, are increasingly um, significant uh, issue for them. And these buildings can be built with highly energy efficient features to reduce lifetime running costs. Um, you can include smart lighting. We can we encourage solar PV to be used sun pipes to allow natural light, meaning less demand on artificial light. Uh, we can add living roofs to these buildings, which helps water runoff, which is, <clears throat> which is um, uh, it, with global warming can be, you know, is, is, is an issue causing uh, flooding in, in many areas. Adaptive ventilation is, um, is really increasingly important in these, in these COVID times. Um, so good ventilation is, is, is a key issue. And you can use air source heating and hot water. And this allows the delivery of buildings that that can be net zero in operation. Um, and in fact, with the right amount of solar PV, they can actually they can actually be negative in, in, in their in their energy consumption. So potentially contributing energy back to the grid. And this is important because when you look at the energy use in commercial buildings across their lifetime, you can see that the construction, manufacturing, transportation is very significant, um, obviously, in the first year. But as you go on over the 50 year lifespan of, of one of these buildings, the cost of lighting, hot water, auxiliary system, heating and cooling become much more significant. So by thinking about these things up front and building these energy efficient features into buildings, you can save significant money over the course of the, uh, of the life of a building. And in fact, some research undertaken by um, the Passive House Trust and Ruth Butler Architects showed that um, for a 20% for a increase in, in investment during the design and construction phase of a building into uh, energy efficient features can produce a saving of 50% in its operational costs. So investing in energy efficient technology reduces lifetime costs by a significant amount. Um, and some examples, this again, this is the research I mentioned. So <clears throat> some of the feedback of, of our buildings in use. This is from the head teacher at Hindringham School. Both children and staff have really enjoyed working in this lovely new classroom with easy access to the outdoors for play. A welcome bonus is that we have saved significantly on energy costs. From Loxley Primary, the clever features of the building have greatly reduced our energy bills and are easy to take care of. We're able to use the elements of the eco-friendly design to teach our children about environmental citizenship. So that we talked about the efficiencies in construction and the efficiencies in use. Um, but there's also another, another issue here, which is what we're calling the path to net zero. So how to create buildings which are entirely net zero across their life cycle. And we're on the path to, to achieve that with these types of buildings because the use of timber is incredible, it gives you a, 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 very, a very strong head start because of the carbon store effect of timber. Um, we're looking to stop the use of concrete through using helical piles and, and much more sophisticated foundation systems. Looking at a fabric first approach, so choosing the fabrics to, to, um, uh, that are most appropriate for the particular building. Use of renewables to provide power and heat, um, not only solar, but there's other types of renewable energy that can be, that can be incorporated into these buildings. Uh, replacing carbon intensive products wherever we can and producing very high air tightness. And with all these things, we're, we're on the path to being able to deliver buildings that are zero carbon in their life cycle. We also at TG Escapes, we have a, a scheme which is um, goes, goes at some way towards offsetting carbon, but more importantly, 
<clears throat> it's 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 engage it's, it's it's designed to engage students and staff in in sustainability and in thinking about the environment. And this is a scheme we run with with a, a company called EcoMatcher. We plant forests in this case uh, in Uganda, and we gift forests to our to our customers um, so that students, um, where appropriate, can adopt trees, visit them, actually track them, and chat to the tree, find out all about uh, the, the farmer that's planted the tree. Uh, and and find, and ask questions about sustainability. So it's just a scheme to to help encourage students and educators to think about environmental issues. So this is from uh, the preschool chairman, a preschool chairman at one of our customers. The eco-friendly building has encouraged even our youngest children to be more aware of their environment and the importance of looking after it. And this is a theme that that keeps coming back: is when you have a, a building which is fundamentally sustainable in its nature. It allows you to have a different type of conversation with students. Now, obviously, in early years, that's a quite that's a much more limited conversation. But we think this conversation needs to start as early as possible, so you can still you can still engage with early years, talking about the different types of materials and timber, and 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 have and start that conversation young to make them to help them become aware and to start them on their sustainability journey. But. Um, there's another really important factor here, which is which is what impact these buildings have on overall educational outcomes. Um, and there's a lot of research which shows throughout the uh, throughout school years that connecting with nature improves educational outcomes. And a couple of examples. This is a study undertaken amongst 21,000 students some time ago now, but it showed that that having larger win just larger windows increased progress in maths by 15% and reading by 23%. And as you'll see with all the buildings that I'm, that I'm showing you today, they all have floor to ceiling um, windows and doors. Um, and these, these are fundamental to the design of these types of buildings. So they, they have a direct impact on, 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 um, on progress. Another study um, undertaken back in, in, in University of Michigan back in 2008 showed that natural views, so views of the natural world, Improved test scores, meant higher graduation rates, found more planning to attend college and fewer reports of criminal behaviour. This is a study undertaken by um, Weitzer Parkett. Um, and what they wanted to do is they wanted to look at how timber framed classrooms performed versus traditional classrooms. So the idea of the study was to demonstrate the advantages of using timber within a classroom and the long-term benefits to students who study in them. Um, and the key finding um, they, they, they discovered was that they measured the heart rates of students in a standard classroom and they measured the heart rates of students in a timber classroom. And what they found was that over the course of the school day, those in a timber classroom, their hearts beat eight and a half thousand times less per day, which for, for, for them is, is an indicator of, of, a, of a lower stress environment, of a more calm, more peaceful environment, um, which, which I think is a significant benefit to these timber-based buildings. Um, and, you know, thinking about early years specifically here, connecting with nature, we know enhances development. Uh, this was a study um, back in 2007 shown that children exposed to nature scored higher on concentration and self-discipline, improved awareness, reasoning and observational skills, were better at reading, writing, maths and science and social studies, better at working in teams and showed improved behaviour overall. And it's no great surprise, really, because as we all know, we all, we all live and work in different spaces and we know that a well-designed space helps us feel great. The space you're in really affects how you feel and how you perform. So buildings that blend with their surroundings following the principles of biophilic design, which are incorporating natural elements, providing easy access to the outdoors, using materials and textures that reflect those in nature, maximizing natural light, healthy interior air quality, and providing views of the natural world outside, really provide environments where people feel good. It's good for staff and student well-being, And importantly, it encourages outdoor learning and environmental citizenship. So this is um, this is we're going to come and meet Sam a bit later. But this is this is a quote from Sam. Both children and staff love learning and working in the building due to the amount of natural light and space, free flow access to the to a covered deck, 
is a huge advantage so outdoor learning can take place in all weathers. And Sam will come on to talk a bit more about that later. We've seen a big improvement in their behaviour and they're much calmer, something that we think might be due to the natural light they have, which was not available in the previous room. The environment seems settled and calm, children able to focus on learning, a very positive impact on staff well-being. And I think that's an important factor here as well. It's not just about um, the, the children. It's important to think about the staff and, and their overall well, well-being and, um, uh, and mental health. One point um, to make specifically about um, special educational needs. We find a lot of these buildings are used for uh, special needs in, 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 in special needs dedicated settings and also to provide special needs spaces in, in more traditional settings. Um, and, the, and the benefits of them is that these self-contained buildings provide a lot of their pride, privacy and security and the peaceful surroundings. Um, so they can be, they can be self-contained and they can be made secure. Um, they also can be tailored for the specific special needs. So you can have small breakout rooms, you can build in treatment rooms, sensory rooms, you can provide adaptable partitions so that spaces can change um, over the course of the day, depending on the specific needs. And this is, um, this is research amongst uh, special needs customers um, in, in the special needs sector. It's such a calming environment. And I've noticed that the students are much calmer and more engaged. They like the structure of the room low stimulus really works for autistic learners. Our pupils feel valued and like the roominess and light of the new learning space. The Cedar building has a warmth that is hard to put into words, but basically they feel comfortable. So coming on to outdoor learning, um, one of the great advantages, one of the things that we hear feedback on is that, that, the, that the multiple access points that these buildings can have um, and the, the covered, uh, the covered uh, uh, walkways provide um, easier access to outdoor learning, which, which, is, which is really important um, and a huge benefit. So the buildings can feature biophilic design elements such as nature spaces outside and natural murals inside. They heighten the feeling that children are in a special space and not inside the main body of the school. The, they allow the physical flow of children from inside to out, um, as well as letting the natural world viewed uh, from inside using the large screens and doors. Use of sun pipes and large windows brings controlled bright light inside. And as I mentioned, the deck areas and canopies provide a sheltered environment. Obviously, we're, we're talking here um, in the UK. The weather isn't always ideal for outdoor learning, but having some sheltered decking um, allows, allows you to use the outdoor space um, in, in poorer weather. And there, there are great benefits to outdoor learning. Um, and, and at the moment, it's well known that physical and mental well-being has fallen into decline. So we believe it's more important than ever to take learning outside of the classroom and inject a, need, a much needed boost to, to pupils' health and, and, and ability to learn. And, and research shows that outdoor learning boosts physical health, enhances mental well-being, improves cognitive function, ignites creativity, um, encourages risk taking, develops social skills. The children are inspired by working in the outdoors and we've seen a great improvement in their creativity. Giving the children a new setting to learn in has had a big impact on their motivation. Working amongst natural surroundings has enhanced the imagination and creativity. And in addition, talking to the pupils about the eco-friendly features has been a great way to teach them about sustainability and the environment. So um, just now to, to, um, to finish off, thinking specifically about space planning and infection control, which is something which is occupying all educators at the moment. Now, <clears throat> This varies by age and, and special needs um, and, and guidance is, is evolving. I think it will continue to evolve. But when we're thinking about new buildings, social distancing requirements can be considered at the design stage. So for example, flexible partitions can be, can be built in, decking and canopies providing outdoor space to provide additional, additional learning space and providing um, space to, to spread, to spread um, children further apart, different different um, classes and, and year groups. You can build in multiple access points so that you can have children entering and leaving through different through different access points to control the flow of, of children ar around a space. And within a, within a broader education setting, um, separate buildings can, can help create uh, different flow 
patterns, if you like, throughout the school setting. So some ways to think about um, how, how you can build some of these important features into the design at, at the early stages. You can think about building and hand washing facilities into the entrance area. You can think about separate toilet facilities to help cross contamination between groups and, 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 and keep, keep that to a minimum. You can think about future proofing by providing interiors that can be finished with an easy to clean material such as white rock. Air circulation is incredibly important. Adaptive ventilation provides very, very high uh, air quality and can be fitted with hygienic filters. So all of this can be built into these, these types of buildings. So these are a few examples of how um, the buildings that we've created for various different customers that, that provide different benefits um, uh, here. So this, is, this was um, uh, an independent school where they built a totally separate self-contained early years setting. So they've managed to take their early years uh, out of the main school, which is, which is uh, good for uh, infection control and that it's keeping, keeping students separate. You can also see that they've created separate outdoor areas here. So, so you could think about things like that to help make sure that you keep separate classes um, apart. You could provide a building, a building can provide just a single classroom to provide some additional teaching space separate to perhaps the other part, another part of the early years setting or the school. Um, double classrooms are, are some of our most popular um, uh, products. Um, so again, a double classroom providing providing space to, to perhaps separate classes or, um, or provide additional teaching space. Uh, another example of an early years setting that was that was built as a dedicated space separate from the main school. So previously, the early years were in the main building and now they're separate. Uh, there's a this is a nursery, a, a dedicated nursery building at St. Fagans. Again, keeps the keeps the early years separate from the from the primary intake. And another example of a standalone nursery um, that has two classrooms, reception rooms, uh, office spaces, so a, a dedicated early years centre. So just to finish off and before I introduce Sam, um, I just want to kind of go, go back and, 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 and uh, revisit our educational mission as a company, TG Escapes. We, we feel it's really important to invest in the future of children, society and the planet. And we're doing that by providing education with buildings that connect to nature, improving educational outcomes and mental well-being, saving energy so that those costs of energy can be reinvested in education. Buildings that are cheaper, quicker and less disruptive to build. Uh, we're planting forests on behalf of customers to engage students in sustainability and, and offset a proportion of the carbon footprint and we're working hard towards being a net zero company. So um, that's that's the, the, the formal presentation. I'd now like to, to move over to, um, to introduce Sam Patel, um, who is Director of Development at Bickley Park School. Um, so I'm just going to end my screen share. and introduce Sam. Hello, Sam. Hi, Mark. It's good to see you. Yes, you too, you too. So um, thanks, for, thanks for joining us today. Um, so Sam, as I said, is uh, Director of Development at Bickley Park School. His career in education spans um, 14 years uh, with experience in both the English National Curriculum and International Baccalaureate. And prior to this, he had a successful career in the city as a finance manager. Um, so his very background has been valuable in bringing real world experiences into the classroom and helping to create exciting learning environments and inspiring students to work to the best of their ability. Um, he's managed the Bickley Park Schools development programme for the last five years. So Sam, welcome. And um, first of all, would you like to just tell us a little bit about Bickley Park and what type of school you have there? Yes, yeah, sure, Mark. So Bickley Park, we're, we're an independent prep school for boys aged two and after 13. We're, we're located in Bromley, which is just about half an hour from, from central London. And delighted to say we were founded in 1918, so not, not um, long since uh, celebrated our centenary. Um, we have probably around 400 boys across both our pre-prep and prep sites. Um, and as a school, we have a very bold vision, and, and that vision is really to, to deliver a world-class education for boys. Um, we really want to put the building blocks in place to help them prepare for and prosper in what, what we know is a rapidly changing and interconnected world. Um, and we want to give them a global outlook um, and prepare them for a future 
um, and, and incorporate these diverse communities. But we also wanted from a younger age to start to build in that understanding of sustainability, eco-credentials and so on. Um, so as a, as a site, not like, or unlike similar to many prep schools uh, in the land, we have a mix of listed buildings. We're blessed with, with the grounds. We have lovely grounds for a London-based school, uh, which we've developed very, very sensitively with, um, with TG, TG's help as well. Um, and some of the buildings that, that we've, we've, um, we've put in place since um, my, my taking over as um, head of school development is we've, we've got a bespoke nursery we, and then we went on to put in some reception blocks, both of which TG constructed. Um, we have a, a huge sports hall on site. We have a bespoke climbing wall in there. We have AstroTurf pitches, um, a cricket ground tennis courts, a covered swimming pool, fully equipped theater, and most recently brand new science labs, which uh, were opened in September 19. Um, we also have dedicated music and DT facilities. So as a, as a prep school, um, we're, we're very blessed with, with the facilities that, um, that we have at our disposal, but we've also thought very hard about the uh, development work that we have actually um, gone through, and TG have played, um, played a big part of that. Great, thank you, Sam. So um, obviously, we're here today to talk specifically about early years. So I'm interested to know why did you why did you settle on a, on an eco solution for your your dedicated early years setting? Yeah. So uh, our strategy as a school was really to to sort of build bottom up, um, and uh, we really were were very interested in in trying to make sure that we offered the best possible setting for our early years. Uh, much like in your in your presentation. Um, historically, the early years setting was within our um, our existing school building, which we felt w was not ideal, um, both in terms of space um, and in terms of enclosure. So um, we we really looked to to invest in in our early years setting, and as a result, we had um, a fifteen percent rise in our role, um, which was, was predominantly within the pre prep age range. Um, and as a result, we need to create three new classrooms, um, and we wanted to offer um, a huge amount of learning space, both inside and out. Um, as a school, we firmly believe that boys tend to be kinesthetic learners and they need plenty of space and opportunity for hands-on learning experiences. So we wanted a space that was light, airy and modern. Um, but as I, as I referred to earlier, also incorporated a strong set of, of eco-credentials. Um, we looked at a number of companies um, and we then settled on, on, on TGE um, because we felt they, they really were most closely matched to our vision. Um, and the number of eco-friendly options that, that they had available were, were, were excellent. Um, and for this particular build, we, we took advantage of probably all of them actually at the time. Um, so the nursery that we have in place, what it, what it boasts is a sealant roof. Um, which, as you said in, in your presentation, really was intended to, to reduce rainwater runoff, and, and, and it's something that we wanted the children to be aware of. Um, the sun pipes are a fantastic addition, which fill the rooms with natural light um, and often feel like um, there are lights on in the building when there aren't. Um, and we really wanted to minimize the use of artificial lighting. Um, all of the services appliances that we have in, in that setting are A-plus rated. Um, and we also opted for solar panels to, to heat the water within the building. Um, and so what we ended up with really was, was a fantastic um, new nursery that really aligned very much with, with the vision of the school to be um, sort of world-class preparatory school for boys. And um, as you said, it was um, a space that then took the early years setting out of the main building, which um, meant that the, uh, the younger children had a lot more space to move in and out um, and, and learn. Great. And how did you find the construction process? Well, it's, it's um, the construction process, I felt was a very smooth process. Um, I worked with Carl, who's, who's one of your directors, um, and I found him to be to be excellent. He was on hand to resolve any questions, queries quickly, um, always at the end of the phone, and, and nothing was was too much trouble. Um, TG, TG handed, handled all aspects of the build from planning um, to handover. And 
you know, it's it, as with any build um, or project, there are going to be bumps along the way. Of course, there are, um, but it's not about the bumps; it's about how how they're they're handled and resolved. And I think TG did a, did a very good job in that regard. Um, very responsive, and 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 were very sympathetic um, to the needs and difficulties of, as a, of a school environment. Um, as anyone who works in in a school will appreciate, delivery deadlines do not move. Um, the school has to open um, early September um, and it has to be ready. So we had a very aggressive deadline um, and I'm pleased to say the project was completed on time and on budget. Great, thank you. So um, now you've had the building for how many years now? Oh gosh, I think we're coming on uh, four years now. Four years now. So so what do you think are the biggest benefits you found from, from this type of building? Yeah, I, I, it's, it's been a fantastic addition to our pre-prep site, there's no doubt. Um, the space previously was occupied by a less attractive school cottage um, and really a space that wasn't utilised by the school itself. So um, what we found is that the, the children and staff, they love learning and working in the building. Um, and as you mentioned in your presentation, it's also important to keep keep an eye on staff um, because if, if your staff enjoy working in an environment, they are going to do a very good job um, and the children love it. Um, so the amount of natural light, the feeling of space um, and the free flow access to that covered deck um, is is phenomenal and we're not blessed with with fantastic weather all year round so that covered deck really does come into play um, and it means that doors can be left open um, and children can move in and out of, of the spaces in a, re in a in a free flow way and continue with their learning in an experimental way um, i think the the methods of construction um, were were very affordable um, compared to a traditional build not cheap but you, you get what you pay for in this world um, but it's certainly a lot more economical than a traditional build um, the speed of construction was also something that was uh, was attractive to us um, and also it can be adapted easily to suit the location um, as with, with many school sites getting to um, to where you want a building to be uh, be located can often be quite a challenge um, managing uh, your your neighbors um, as well as uh, as well as trying to get through buildings um, and across fences so we had a couple of changes even to to our building process um, while it was underway um, in order to maximize storage options and, and TG were, were able to cope with that really well so I'd say um, the benefits of a building like this are huge um, and we were so impressed with the benefits to our staff and children and the way in which it had added value to our pre-prep site in a number of ways that we then went on to appoint TG to build um, a three-class reception block for us um, soon after. Great. As I was <clears throat> in my presentation, I mentioned um, outdoor learning, and I know that's something which is important to you. So how important is it to your school? And um, you know, what, what are your views on that? Yeah, you know, as, as a school, um, outdoor learning learning for us is, is, is hugely important. Um, we do have a forest school program within the school as well, um, because, you know, our feeling is that being outside, um, it allows children to really express themselves freely. Um, and unlike an indoor classroom, there aren't any space constraints, meaning children can jump, shout, explore to their heart's content. So um, the sense of freedom that playing outdoors brings is fantastic for a child's development, both physically and mentally. Um, they'll begin to understand what they can do by themselves, develop a can-do attitude, which has a lot of other benefits um, in a more traditional educational setting um, and provides a solid foundation for future learning. So um, as part of the process, we also created an outdoor learning space. Um, we use another contractor, which um, we felt also aligned with our vision um, and created um, an outdoor learning classroom in the space that we had outside of the nursery building. Um, and TG works seamlessly alongside them. So it's a very, very important part for, for, for us um, and for the children and for the staff. Great, thank you. So think about anybody that might be considering um, an eco building for their early years. What, uh, what advice would you give them? Hmm. Um, plan, plan, plan and plan again. Uh, make the most of, of the in-house expertise that TG have available. Um, I think we'll, we'll always have our own ideas um, but um, what you need to do is to really look at the experts um, who, who've run a number of different projects and listen to what they have to say. Um, TG also listened to us and, and it was very much a partnership, the operation. Um, keep the spaces simple and open. 
um, it, it's it's very easy to over clutter don't do it um, the, the, the simpler you keep them the more open they feel the better it will be for, for the children um, and for the staff and and try to be smart with the location of your sort of facilities so um, you talked mark in your presentation about sort of hand washing and washrooms um, obviously all of our buildings took place pre-covid which I think is a phrase that we'll get used to saying pre-COVID, post-COVID. Um, but we found that sort of using Jack and Jill toilet areas worked perfectly and linked two rooms with a space that was otherwise fairly awkward. Um, think about storage. Um, it's something that can very easily be overlooked and use all the nooks and crannies. Um, as the design is modular, the rooms can be very easily tailored. Um, the other things I pick up on a free flow and outdoor space, it's really important. So ensure you build enough covered space so that the children can move freely in and out of rooms, no matter what the weather. Um, the red cedar wood is beautiful. Um, I absolutely love the finish, um, but um, to keep it looking as it is can be expensive. Um, so do make sure that you build that into your budget. We've now opted to allow our buildings to age to, uh, to a very um, attractive natural silver gray. Um, and we're quite happy with that as a school, but it's something that, that you may want to think about. That's great. Thank you, Sam. That's um, that's very that's very insightful, and um, I really appreciate your time here today. Um, thank you, everyone, for for joining us. And um, that's it from us. Hope you enjoy the rest of your festival. Good afternoon.